the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. I am an echo of that voice. Are we together? There are times you go to the kitchen, ladies, to prepare your meal and the nature of that meal is such that in one hour you can make it is that true there are times you go to prepare a meal can even be similar and two hours down the line you are still in the kitchen when you see the holy spirit move like this it's a communication of many things for many people it's an indication that seasons are opening are we together yes seasons the weak is living for the strong. See that? The less anointed is living for another dimension. Number two, when you see extended periods of worship in the presence of God like this, there are impartations happening. Impartations are not just anointings. They are answers. Answers. So in that worship, the Bible says, be still and then you will know. You may not hear a rema, but an anointing is bringing an answer. It's not the one you've always received. Number three, in these kinds of atmospheres, deliverances, deliverances. You don't have to fall and shout and call. In these atmospheres, convictions are strengthened. Suddenly, a worship song is rising, and you just stand and you're just thinking and saying, My life, my life. Will it continue this way, prayerlessness? Will it continue this way? No commitment to God. And whilst the worship, you're not hearing anything directly, but the Holy Ghost is speaking to your spirit, man. And you can capture the impulses of the spirit. So when, when there are extended periods of worship like this, you must understand that the Holy Spirit is doing something specifically. Now, it is good to be excellent and organized. We believe in excellence, you know that. But then I think the challenge sometimes is that there is too much interruption because sometimes we can be so organized we are more conscious of our ego and the rudiments of things you see those who are like that cannot get the best of the holy spirit because his character is the wind is that true the bible says the wind blow it where it listeth you cannot tell from whence it's coming or where it is going. He says such is the character, is the nature. It's not that the one who is led by the Spirit is disorganized, but that the Holy Spirit sustains an ability to navigate you at will and can be able to alter whatever according to God's divine purposes. Learn it. Learn it. Don't get to a point where you box the Holy Spirit and say you move like this. No, sir. No, sir. That's the reason why we never, never experience certain superior dimensions of him. I tell you, this worship, I can, I, I just wish that I was alone in my secret place and I can sing like this and worship till morning. Not pray. I'm not talking of praying. Many things should happen in the secret place. If the only thing you do in the secret place is praying in tongues, then there is a lot you are missing. Let me tell you, praying in tongues is very important. But you see, the Holy Spirit must be the governor and the Lord of your secret place. There are times you go to the secret place and for one hour you cannot say a word. You just sit down, yet you are communicating. Because you see, in the realm of the Spirit, your mouth is not the only instrument of communication. There can be a spirit communication happening, yet your mouth is not saying anything. Your mind may even be unfruitful to that experience. But after that secret place, you know that you left with something. It's like an intercourse. Learn it. 
this is how to be spiritual it is not longevity in the christian environment that makes people mature it is their ability to have trained their spirits to to train their sensitivity to be able to understand the things that the holy spirit is doing if all that the holy ghost wants us to do tonight is to just sing and sing and worship that's what we do he is the governor he is the one who is responsible for the transformation he knows what menu befits what situation there are people the situation in your life right now sincerely speaking you don't need a sermon you need a song it's only a song that has the capacity to minister to you are we together when you've been beaten by life you've prayed you have fasted sometimes he captures his thoughts in a song and you may like all the songs that we sang here you may not remember anything but there is a line that's where the anointing is the anointing may not be on all the song it may just be on a line a phrase a clause a sentence part of it and you keep singing it till your spirit soaks that anointing are we together you must understand this is how people are edified you see because in a place like this there are people inside outside are we together now and everybody has his needs as a man of god you don't just come with a redumented understanding you see people will keep looking at you but very soon your church will go dry because the truth is that the holy spirit it, the operation of the holy spirit his omnipresence is a mystery such that everybody can leave a meeting and say you were talking to me yet the experiences were different for many people half of your edification for tonight's meeting has happened in this worship if we did not capture this moment of worship there is something that god intended for you tonight that you would not have received let's learn to be spiritual let's learn to be spiritual let's learn organization is good but carnality is driving the fullness of the Holy Spirit from our lives, from our meetings, because of regimented activities. Organization is good. But brothers and sisters, we are talking about the Spirit of the living God. The Holy Spirit is not an angel. When he comes, you step back. I think he's pride to resist the Holy Spirit. I think he's sin to resist the Holy Spirit. Even if it is for the sake of the breakthrough of one person, let's let him do it. You hear people shouting, it's not a proof that a man is anointed. It's a proof that God is working. Are we together now? You left your house and you came and the spirit of God is working. The angels of God that excel in strength, they are working. Reading the hearts of men like pages of books. Oh, this one is in need of a healing. Ah, uh, how do we communicate the healing? Okay, there is somewhere in the message where we'll come and they leave you and they go to someone this person is depressed at this level of depression you will not even hear anything so he comes back to the preacher and says raise a song because there is somebody who is too depressed to start hearing any rema no matter what you say it will not bless him it is in that song you find out that everyone may be tired but only two people are crying that song was for them this is called the ministry of the spirit so the holy ghost is ministry you see that it's not it's not charismatism it's not an, an a, a man of god showing his anointed uh -uh. it's the holy spirit this is the only way you bless people L listen let me tell you it's not just by the excellency of speech it's by allowing the holy spirit you must give him right of way i've said it, you can fake power you can't fake relationship you can't fake the secret place we must have the ears that hear and the eyes that see as a preacher as a man of god you are standing here as a servant in partnership with the holy spirit to minister to the needs of people men of god let's never forget that this whole thing is about the people if there are 90 people here who are sick even if i'm teaching on relationship the healing anointing will start flowing you see that because the holy ghost knows 90 people cannot come sick and go just because I planned no 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 the Holy Ghost will say I know we prepared for this but the hunger of my people is and their faith compelling that dimension of the anointing and a wise man of God 
will be able to say even so come the spirit and the bride come 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 lord jesus someone traveled far to come and get an anointing come lord jesus someone left the hospital with their medical bills to come come lord jesus so after a meeting like this you find out that as people are going home everybody leaves with a testimony or that if you teach religiously a time will come where only a few people a few people not more than 10 out of thousands of people who will be saved let me tell you what members do they love you but the truth is that they are not being changed and they will they may not stop coming but their faith dies when they come they don't expect transformation they, they will not even invite anybody because they know it's an embarrassment or will I tell this visitor now come for koinonia and the visitor says it's half of the service already I've not been blessed my depression is still there the headache is pounding me I thought you said the Holy Spirit is here if you are in ministry or God is calling you into ministry here I beg you in the name of Jesus Christ pay the price before you come and hold the mic give the people something let every meeting be an encounter an encounter from the worship that's why we pray that's why we prepare for every meeting as if it's the last because you don't know whose destiny someone may visit koinonia now once and may not have the privilege to come again so he will live with his perception there's no excuse if you're a pastor here make sure your workers are spiritual i've said it skill is good but spirituality precedes skill you see him playing this thing someone can sit down and be playing the keyboard and what he's playing is music and alter what the holy spirit is doing another person can sit on the drums and just be playing whatever he wants to do another person can hold the mic here and stand to sing and just be twisting your tongue and the people know they are not getting blessed excellence is only useful when spirituality is intact then you can communicate it's the ministry of the spirit let the weight of your glory let it cover us let the life of your river flow let this truth that brings healing let it rain in us let the weight of your glory please I want you to pay attention to what I'm going to be teaching tonight wherever we stop if we can finish it because I want us to pray hallelujah I'm teaching tonight on the gifts of the spirit I want you to expect a solid encounter please a solid encounter open your spirit open your ears you're a man of God open your spirit for the sake of your precious members open your spirit tonight's teaching is going to introduce something to our lives by the grace of God I, I trust God there is there is somewhere I want us I'm trusting that God will take us it's like a flight in the spirit if we can get there tonight we have made progress but I pray I pray that no flesh will stop us from attaining there first Corinthians chapter 12 Spirit of God help our weaknesses let us be communicators of spirit and life. The subject of the gift of the spirit 
has scarcely been dealt with especially in recent time in the body of Christ great men like Papa E. Hagen E. W. Kenyon T. L. Osborne and great men and women who ministered powerful in the spirit from the 40s the 50s then the the faith movement and the charismatic revival that swept across the mid 60s down to the late 70s into the early 80s and after that many people have experienced the ministry of the spirit we have written books about the gifts of the spirit not just the gifts but dimensions of operation in the spirit but I think in my opinion and, and may God forgive me if I sound proud but I think there is a very big gap in the understanding of people over the gifts of the spirit the truth is that even those who walk in them cannot properly explain them it's just been from one manuscript theologically communicated to another and so it's, it's largely a repetition but tonight I trust that God will help us to do justice in the name of Jesus Christ 1 Corinthians chapter 12 when Jesus walked the earth Jesus manifested certain dimensions of the Holy Spirit that that caused the people in his day to marvel the Gospels are full of exclamations of shock and wonder as to the invincibility of Jesus Christ three and a half years but he moved in such proportions of power and grace are we together and Jesus began to mentor he taught but he took out his time to mentor 12 people there were other different groups 72 and etc but the 12 people he began to mentor them he taught them on several things and when you read the Gospels you see um, the book of Matthew Mark Luke all of them are wonderful but notice that the communicators did not emphasize the ministry of the Holy Spirit there were certain dimensions but there was very little emphasis it was John 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 the Apostle are we together now when you read from chapter 14 chapter 15 chapter 16 it was an the entire those scriptures were an exegesis on the personality of the Holy Spirit Jesus was introducing the person of the Holy Spirit to them. He called him different names, a helper, a standby, etc., etc. They had seen the manifestations of Jesus. At a certain time, he empowered them and sent them two by two. The Bible says they returned with wonders, yet they did not understand the dynamics of what they were doing. They said, Master, even the demons were subject to us in thy name. And he said, do not rejoice that the demons are subject to you. Let me give you another reason. And then he says, I saw Satan falling. So several things. Do you know, even the apostles themselves did not have a thorough understanding as to the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit did not start manifesting in the New Testament. It's always been there in different dimensions. But no one was able to construct a theology, a doctrine out of it and communicate it intelligently to the body of Christ. It was Paul the Apostle. Paul the Apostle who was granted access to the mysteries of Christ. Who came to the church in Corinth. Now theologically speaking, the church in Corinth where they were at a period of spiritual renaissance. The power of God was breaking out all kinds of things. They did not know the name of what was manifesting through them. They knew that the Holy Spirit found a lavish dimension of um, um, access to that territory. People were prophesying to a point that there was disorderliness. So when Paul came, Paul knew that he needed to build a theological basis for the understanding of the ministry of the Holy Spirit and then importantly the gifts of the Spirit are we together now so Paul now is speaking to them on the gifts of the Holy Spirit verse 4 12 verse 4 please let's be very fast let's trust God for grace hallelujah 
it starts from verse 1 if you read it says now concerning spiritual gifts please give us verse 1 then we'll go to verse 4 it says now concerning spiritual gifts the Holy Ghost is speaking through Apostle Paul I do not want you koinonia to be ignorant meaning that you can be born again filled with the Holy Spirit even walking in the gifts of the Spirit but you are ignorant of the dynamics the inner workings of it and it's impossible to gain mastery when you are trying it takes understanding it says concerning spiritual gifts brethren so he's speaking to people who are born again speaking to those who have had an encounter with the life of God I do not want you to be ignorant let's go to verse 4 there are diversities of gifts but the same spirits there this is a very interesting information notice the construction of Paul Paul is teaching people who he wants to have you can sit down brother or find somewhere if you can't sit on his seat you can sit uh, wherever there he says there are diversities of gifts let me tell you what that means look up please Paul is saying you are going to see people move in dimensions that are unusual dimensions that will stretch you sometimes beyond your normal um, gentleman hold on my friend listen hold on just leave the guy he's crying just leave him there please don't worry let him just shift just shift a little there and leave him let's just leave him with God there and it's all right he was covering the camera thank you there are diversities of gifts listen do you know why Paul brought this because if you understand the gift of the Spirit it can stretch faith except you know God there are certain gifts that are controversial in their operation so Paul is saying look the first information church I want you to know is that in your walk of faith you are going to encounter men that will move so strangely in the gifts of the Spirit it will stretch your intellect it will stretch your education you are going to see things you are not familiar with but I give you a note it is the same spirit that is operating are you getting that information now so someone can come for a meeting like this and watch people fly under the anointing are we together now and watch people running out by the spirit and say this is this is strange I am not used to the Holy Spirit moving this way. That's why Paul started by giving us this information. That the gifts of the Spirit are diverse. Brothers and sisters, the first information I want you to know tonight is that the gifts of the Spirit are not nine. The gifts of the Spirit are only theologically classified based on the revelation that Paul's exegesis gives us but the gifts of the spirit are not nine that's why the word of god must be studied from the vista of the spirit otherwise all that you will just read is theology it says there are how many gifts diversities meaning there were certain gifts paul did not see but are available the gifts never stopped as nine the gifts are as diverse as the alignment of the saints meaning that you are going to see certain gifts that you may not exactly find a name for them and so chances are that when you see it you're going to say no 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 this may not be of God there are diversities of gifts are you learning something tonight it says but the same spirit when you study God's generals one of the controversies between two of the generals Alexander the way and um, Maria Woodward Eater. Now listen, Maria Woodward Eater, historically speaking, was the one who brought what we call trans evangelism, a phenomenon where people under a strange influence of the spirit will not only fall under the anointing but will freeze in a position for hours. It's not a phenomenon that they had seen. It was in our meetings like this guy now, he can stand like that for five hours. You can't do that ordinarily with your hand. And you can see people stop like this for hours now watch this they did not have internet and the media was not strong for people to have access to themselves so when Alexander the way although a great man mighty man whom in the healing anointing when he stumbled across a woman at the other side of the earth 
who was carrying out mighty miracles he found out from her meetings that people were freezing and stopping Alexander the way said that woman number one the fact that she's a woman ministering is under the spirit of divination and Maria Woodward Ita said no I'm a woman who loves God God anointed me and called me to be an evangelist this is a man of God anointed Alexander Doe was the spiritual mayor of Illinois but at the Zion city yet in that level that that supposed high level of spirituality he could not discern that although this manifestation was foreign to him it was still of the Holy Ghost this is one of the biggest limitations that the church has given the Holy Spirit that the fact that God is not moving the way he moved five years ago does not mean he's not the one moving be careful be careful be careful there are manifestations that you see that you may never be able to capture the Holy Ghost can open your eyes and conjure scriptures together that will paint a picture that reflects that experience but you will not see it at plain sight and so chances are that you will doubt the fact that it is God moving in that dimension Smith Wigglesworth will be moved powerfully under the spirit and he would carry a dead man and punch the man not that he was an angry man he didn't even know what moved him what is the name of that gift listen let me tell you something are you seeing why when he finished teaching he told them i show you a more excellent way a more excellent way of ministering these gifts perfectly because if you lack love there will be criticism there will be cynicism are we together why did you heal this brother by hugging him where is it in the bible that you hug a brother and heal him and so you say this is the devil where is it in the bible that a congregation hold their hands together to pray in tongues that means praying in tongues is demonic publicly are you seeing now and sometimes i have taught us here that the bible is a prophetic book you can make it preach anything a herbalist can show you scriptures here that will cause you to walk in witchcraft many things happen in the bible demons spoke donkeys spoke people spoke in their backsliding state prophets who doubled into divination spoke it takes the spirit to divide the word accurately and show you which was sponsored the part of scripture that was sponsored by the spirit is what we call the word of god are you getting blessed there are diversities of gifts diversities of gifts in this end time we are going to see moves of the spirit in proportions and dimensions that will bring harsh criticism but will birth the glory of god in unusual ways point number two please let's hurry up number five media help us There are differences in ministries. Now, do you know what he's saying? That means under the same gift, the way you dispense it like a pharmacist giving drugs is different. The same gift, but the dispensing of that gift, the administration of it is different. That means you can see three prophets. Are we together? But the character and the nature of that operation is different verse 6 then it says there are diversities of activities but it's the same God who works all and in all so let's get to the gifts 7 but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all now here is the key the gift of the spirit is for the profit of the body the profit of the body the profit of the body not the profit of a denomination not the profit of a man of God not a profit of just an individual it is for the profit of all verse 8 for to one is given the word of wisdom so Paul is classifying them now are we together now 
through the spirit to another is given the word of knowledge through the same spirit please let's run it down next verse to another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healing take note do you see an s there with gifts not a gift of healing gifts of healing by the same spirit next verse to another oh dear media is playing a lot of games with her our passion let me open it so that i can read it there's no time for this to another faith by the same spirit to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit to another the working of miracles to another prophecy to another discerning of spirits to another various or diverse kinds of tongues to another interpretation of tongues 11 and we stop there it says but all this worketh that one and the same very same spirit dividing unto every man severally as he wills now close your bible and let's talk so paul for the sake of order remember the entire text of first of first corinthians 12 13 14 the entire subject can be summarized in one word first corinthians 14 verse 40 it says let all things be done decently and in order so paul he, his 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 passion is to see that everything is done decently but in order to do that he had to build like a wise master builder and teach them the gifts of the spirit are not limited to nine yes it is true that there are nine gifts theologically defined according to the experience of the present day church theologically speaking the nine gifts let's work with the nine gifts for the sake of understanding um, many of us know that they are divided into three categories the first category is called the revelatory gifts the gifts that have to do with revelation and insight from the realm of the spirit revelatory gifts and there are three of the revelatory gifts the word of wisdom the word of knowledge and the discerning of spirits i'm not going to dwell on all of them i'll just touch them there are a few i want us to just stop there revelatory gifts that's the first classification theologically speaking that the gifts of the spirit are classified into three first revelatory gifts the word of wisdom the word of knowledge the discerning of spirits number two utterance or vocal gifts that's the second classification gifts that have to do with speech communication all the gifts will require communication but that this one's the primary medium for dispensing them is your mouth speech the gift of diverse kinds of tongues the gift of interpretation of tongues and the gift of prophecy comes under this classification the gift of diverse kinds of tongues don't just write tongues diverse kinds of tongues the gifts of interpretation of tongues and the gift of prophecy and then number three power gifts the third classification theologically speaking power gifts and that includes the gift of faith the gifts of healing add s to gifts the gifts of healing and then the working of miracles so three 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 the revelatory gifts that make you think like christ the utterance gifts that make you speak like christ the power gifts that make you act like christ the revelatory gifts make you think like christ the vocal gifts make you speak like christ the power gifts cause you to act like Christ. Are we together? Let's take them one by one. Very quickly. Number one, word of wisdom. What is it? What exactly is the word of wisdom? The word of wisdom is the ability to supernaturally profess solutions to situations and problems. The supernatural ability to profess solutions to situations 
problems, challenges that are beyond your current level of education. Sorry, I'm fast, I'm running. Supernatural ability to profess solutions to problems and situations beyond your current level of education, exposure, physical maturity, and experience. When you sustain an ability in the spirit to communicate divine ideas and solutions to human problems, problems that defy your current level of exposure, problems that defy the, 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 the knowledge that your level of maturity should have brought, your level of education and your level of experience is called the word of stone. Access to supernatural illumination. Access to supernatural understanding. You need it. Now, let me tell you this. Many people have downplayed on this gift of the spirit. You know why? Because in our thinking, we think it is not charismatic. Do you know? Do you know? Truly, let me tell you. This is one of the apex of the apostolic ministry. Not even power gifts. Not revelatory gifts. It's impossible to claim you're working in the apostolic office truly and lack the gift of wisdom. Because the apostolic office is first an administrative office. Jesus himself manifested this. John chapter 8. When you read 1 to 11, it was the, the, the issue of the woman who was caught in adultery. John chapter 8, 1 to 11. We're not, going to, we're not going to read all that because of time, but just write it. John chapter 8, 1 to 11. Jesus was teaching and he sat down somewhere. And then the Pharisees and scribes caught a woman in adultery. You know, every time I read this story, I'm surprised. Where was the man? You see that victimizing women did not start today. No. The man may be part of them. The goal was to pin Jesus. You, you see it now? Let me tell you where you need this gift. Because this our world is full of wicked men and women. Who will look for every and anything to throw you. Destroy your business. Destroy your ministry. Destroy you down. You need the gift of the word of wisdom. And then they came to Jesus. Sorry, there's no time. Let me just quote it. Threw that woman in front of him. And they said, Jesus, you claim you're a prophet. You claim you're a by. Here's a test. We caught this woman in adultery. In the very act of it. Very act means that there should be a man. They said, man, you can go. The woman, let's just go. <laughs> you see how wicked those people were. Then when they threw him, they now said, Moses said, I hope you know that part of the condition to be a true prophet is that you must acknowledge every other prophet that has come. So if Jesus now rejected Moses, they'll say, you see, you're a fake prophet. And if Jesus said, yes, you are right, they'll say, now you have submitted to our religious governing authorities. That was a difficult situation. You will be faced with situations in your life where yes and no will still put you in trouble. Both yes and no will land you in trouble. Your enemies is like penalty. You know how they, they, they pay football and they've pinned you. You are the goalkeeper. They're about to pay. They, the people are already shaking themselves. It's at that point we need to tap into this dimension of the gift of the spirit. People vow that because of tribalism they will drive you out of your job. The boss says something, your superior and direct boss and the manager says something conflicting statements they carry the file and drop and two of them are calling you let me tell you you don't need education you need the gift of the word of wisdom you obey the one directly under you they sack two of you you obey the one above you you come back and meet the one in your unit it helps us to think like Christ he says let this mind permit this mind to be in you which was also in Christ Jesus business people need this mind every leader needs this understanding and here's what jesus did they thought jesus was going to say certain things jesus kept writing writing the holy ghost was moving him the fountain of wisdom self then he lifted up his head in confidence and here's what he said he who does not have sin 
he was talking about is another way of saying I'm the only one who is qualified to cast the stone. You get it? And then he said, he, just like Joseph said, find a man who is discreet and wise. It was another way of saying I'm here. Oh. He who does not have sin to cast the stone. And I'm sure he was the oldest guy who was the other party there. And he lifted the stone and he dropped it. Everyone dropped it and he said, woman, where are thine accusers? And she turned. He said, neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more. Jesus manifested. That was not word of knowledge. That was the gift of the word of wisdom. How many times we have been whipped by life because we lack this. An opportunity that would have honored you how many pastors who stood before government officials would have made certain statements by the spirit that would have given them access to certain things imagine how many foolish decisions our loved ones have taken born again and filled with the holy spirit but not allowing these possibilities find expression you need the gift of the word of wisdom in your life education is limited your experiences are limited. You cannot wait to respond to life only based on your exposure and experience. You will need that grace. Can we pray in one minute and cry to the God of heaven and say, Lord, I'm tired of foolish decisions. I access wisdom by the Spirit. The word of wisdom. My life is full of challenges that need to be surmounted. And Lord, I need a dimension of wisdom that is beyond my age. There are many of us in ministry, you, you have challenges financially, administratively, in terms of growth and membership. There are many of us here, you need grace. You don't know what to do. Should I get a job? Should I do business? You, you need the word of wisdom. You need the word of wisdom. A supply of intelligence that is above this realm. You need God to communicate something that bails you out. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Help me, oh God. Spirit of the living God, I open up to you. My destiny is at the mercy of your wisdom. Speak to me. Tired of piercing myself again and again with needless sorrows. When your wisdom can bail me out of the vicissitudes of life. Hallelujah. Are we blessed? Please sit down. We have to run. Just help those under the anointing. In 2004, I spent three weeks praying this gift into my life. Three weeks. God is my witness praying it into my life I said Lord you cannot send me as foolish as I am and I am too young to make the decisions I should make I need a supply of intelligence that is higher listen some mistakes in life don't have second chance some answers the Bible says to not be hasty you can stand before your destiny helper and blow up your opportunity forever that's why Jesus kept quiet because this is not a usual communication you need the spirit to speak how many people have stood before their supervisors how many people have stood before their financial helpers how many people have stood before their boss He says, I will give you a mouthpiece and a wisdom that your enemies will not be able to gainsay or resist. Number two, the word of knowledge. What is it? The word of knowledge is a supernatural insight and access into past and present events. With a view to preferring solutions. With a view to preferring solutions. Access into happenings. Access into occurrences. Sometimes even occurrences that predate your own birth. Our world is full of wickedness. And we need this dimension of the Holy Spirit that can help us to go back in time and piece together useful informations 
that help us to interpret the happenings in our lives are we together now oftentimes the secret to the future is in the past when we can sustain the eyes to go back and see and understand word of knowledge the purpose of the gift of the word of knowledge primarily aside from supplying informations is to build the faith and the conviction of the recipients if I can reach into an information in your life and supply you an information that might be useful in helping you interpret your today it can build your faith now notice that the gift of the word of knowledge and prophecy works peri pursu. In fact, many people mistaking this gift, half of what people call prophecy is the manifestation of the word of knowledge. The word of knowledge only deals with past events and present events. When it becomes futuristic, that's prophecy. Past events, present events. Two examples very quickly. In John chapter 1, you read from verse 45 to the last verse 51. John chapter 1. The Bible tells us about a man called Nathaniel. Are we together? Nathaniel was beckoned by Philip that Jesus, they had met the Messiah that was prophesied. And Nathaniel made a very sarcastic statement. Nathaniel said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? While all that conversation was happening, Jesus was somewhere watching them. Then Nathaniel comes and Jesus sees Nathaniel. Here's what Jesus said. An Israelite indeed in whom there is guile. And Nathaniel saw him. I said, uh uh, you mean you know me? And he said, Nathaniel, while you were under the tree insulting me, I saw you. <gasps> Nathaniel was amazed. Immediately, an attestation this is the Christ, truly, the Son of the living God. And then he said, Nathaniel, just because I gave you this, you were stunned. You are going to see the heavens open and the angels ascending and descending. Remember when Jesus was with the Samaritan woman at the well. That woman had the potential to bring a lot of people to hear and listen to Jesus. Preparing them for what would happen at redemption. But there needed to be an access point. The woman had to be convicted. And then Jesus came to her. And they started a conversation about water. And then Jesus looks at her. And says to her, Madam, you have five husbands past. The sixth one that you are with now is not your husband. And she looked, she said, I perceive you are a prophet. And then he began to talk to her. The Bible says she left her water pot there. Ran to the city and said, all of you come. Come and see a man. He didn't say come and see a preacher. Come and see a man that manifested a gift that astonished me. Come. Come see a man that has told me what I've done. And when the people came and listened to Jesus, here was their testimony. We now believe not because of what you have said. We have had that encounter by ourselves. The word of knowledge, if used in accordance with the word, is powerful. I have watched people's faith jump, leap, just because a communication, one word was given to them by the Spirit. Do you know, let me tell you this. Never fight the gifts of the Spirit. It may be abused, that's why we are balancing it. But do not ever fight it. The encouragement that happens to your faith when a true man of God gives you a genuine word of knowledge, not a general guesswork that you know this is not edifying. There are words of knowledge that are not blessing. Are we together? If I look at you and say you have pain all over your body, the probability is yes something must be paining you somewhere so that's not powerful enough to convict you but when i look at you and say pastor alpha while you were eating yam from home before coming and this and that and that and that and i talk to you ah something happens to your faith and all of a sudden you look and you are like my the God who can see me is the one who is telling me now by this time tomorrow you will be foolish to doubt him are we together now the word of knowledge listen listen let me have your attention the word of knowledge is a powerful instrument of building faith 
Have you gone to a place where you see people being sarcastic and nasty and lousy and insulting the cynical people? And then one really strong, accurate, powerful, well-delivered word of knowledge. And all of a sudden, you see everybody wipes sleep. And you say, lift up your hand and everybody is lifting and open. The unbelief in our world required the gifts of the Spirit to tame doubt and release the power of God to people. I remember betting with a woman the gender of her child and I told her she argued it was a female I said if it's a male you will make pepper soup for me if it's a female I don't know how to make pepper soup so I will give you the financial equipment I started dancing I said hey hey somebody is going to make pepper soup for me <laughs> what a free way of earning a living <laughs> Imagine what happens to your stubborn loved ones. You know, we have almost every family has, for whatever reason, we have people around us who the devil is trying to snatch. You pray in tongues, they shout, they talk nonsense. I want to go to the house of God. No, 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 no. And then one day, God just lands in a way and you commute, not, not for self-aggrandizement. You speak a powerful word to your father. And say, sir, the Lord told me to tell you while you were at the bank trying to collect that money, it was remember that your argument with that woman, her name was Stella. Usually they will act as if you are lying, and then later they'll call you and say, Who told you? Let me tell you, the human spirit can never resist the supernatural. Our pride can claim it doesn't matter, it's a lie. It's a lie. If you, if you encounter the word of knowledge, whether you repent or not, you can't sleep that night, for sure. Ah, ah. He called my name and said this and said that. I think where it was in Joss, if you can remember, when Joss ministering um, some, I think one of the polytechnics, and then while I was ministering, the Holy Ghost ministered to me that there was a young man who was doubting you know you know these are people where you know doubting doubting how are we sure remember this story and i said there is a young man now this is what you are thinking to yourself you are doubting and this is what is wrong with you god will heal you now when that guy came out even me when you see him you know it had to be god that brought him out the guy just came out dragging and said honestly he was standing there doubting this thing i was like magic brothers and sisters our shout is too much let the gift help us our 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 begging is too much let the god brought these gifts to make the gospel superior the the way we communicate this thing we are the mercy of people's wills we beg we beg you know everybody oh yeah lift your hand now is jesus not here my jesus and everybody's looking at you where is he and you are negotiating with them no the bible says that when i came to you i did not come with the excellency of speech but in the demonstration of power even if you are a prophet if someone gives you a word of knowledge it will impress you you won't say because i'm walking it it's like you are it's like you are a nurse when you are sick won't you turn for injection will you say because i'm a nurse? no Another nurse will give you an injection and you will receive it so that you will be well. Listen, I want you to cry tonight and say, Lord, my family needs salvation. Let this gift of the Spirit work in my life. Pray one minute. There are doubters in my community insulting and blaspheming the name of the Lord. Oh, that you would grant me access, oh God. the word of knowledge supernatural illumination insight into events explaining the mysteries of the lives of men helping men make sense of their lives hallelujah please sit down number three discerning of spirits I can spend the whole night here but let's see how God will help us what's discernment or we call it discernment or discerning of spirits please do not joke with this gift this
this gift of the spirit will be um it will bail you out of many pains are we together what is discerning of spirits the gift of perception perception the ability to perceive spiritual impulses the ability to know the origin the source and the motivation behind the manifestation the origin the source and even the motif behind the manifestation is called discernment whether activity is initiated and sustained by God whether it is an act of man's will or it is demonic you will never judge them by the physical results it will take discernment for you to know that which is of God brothers and sisters let me tell you and I submit to you with all humility it will be foolish to imagine everything happening in the body of Christ is of God no there are things that are orchestrated by demons there are doctrines that came from devils the Bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter days some will depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons there is such a doctrine as the doctrine of demons not the study of demons an understanding that was fabricated intentionally from the pit of hell to destroy the saints are we together you need discernment it is only through discernment that you can judge righteous judgment it's impossible for you to judge accurately if you lack discernment you will call good evil you will call evil good you will call saints devils you will call devils saints it takes discernment the realm of the spirit is not heaven the realm of the spirit is a spiritual environment the environment that birthed this realm the raw materials that have now crystallized as matter in this realm came from the realm of the spirit and anyone who has access to the realm of the spirit has a superior advantage whether through divination whether through the holy spirit or any spirit any spirit that can access the realm of the spirit has an advantage over this realm that's why jesus said i am the door there are many other entrances but he says i'm the authorized entrance meaning you can enter the house through a window you can enter the house through somewhere if i enter your house if you step into your house and you find me and i crawled my way through a gutter somewhere am i inside your house yes did i enter legally no the authorized way is the gate and the door I've told you every power you see being manifested on earth is God's power. Every plus the power manifested by witchcraft. Once have I spoken, twice have we heard that all the only reason why it is called witchcraft is because there is an agenda behind that result. And the whole spirit is not the spirit that authorized that possibility to find expression so there is the correctness of the result does not mean it is of god the correctness of the result is gauged by the spirit that sponsored it any activity in the realm of the spirit sponsored by the holy spirit has god's endorsement that means that it is possible this guy can be sick and as a herbalist i can conjure leaves based on a book my grandfather taught me correct and he says when you put lemon and add it with guava drink pour charcoal on it set it on fire in the night it can raise a kind of incense that will bring health to him and my grandfather will say that's how we live healthy this guy can be sick i will conjure those things it will shock you right in your presence the way the guy will be healed you say i can't feel pain again he said that's it and he'll go and bring someone else 
Now, if I come as a man of God and I say, wow, we are brothers. We are not brothers. We are not brothers. We are not brothers. Are we together? No, we are not brothers. Brothers are those from the same father and mother or at least father. Correct? We can't be brothers. You see, because the spirit, one time I was ministering to a lady and they took her somewhere in Zaria here. And she, she described a very nasty experience that she had. She said when she went there, one of the things that happened to her was that they will burn, you will drop your money, not honorarium, there's an exact amount that you drop. Once you drop the man, you know, the whatever it is, will now call certain names, cajole, you know, read from books, slates and all kinds of things. And the moment they say it, a spirit will tell that man um, whatever spirit influence and then all of a sudden you know how it happens when people manifest the the victim now will start shaking shaking and before you know it the spirit will start speaking now here's the interesting point after all the conversation with the spirit you now ask moya why did you come maybe they annoyed me or i didn't eat you know how spirits talk they are so dull i've no i've not eaten and you people are eating in this land and we are here hungry and then instead of casting out the devils because they cannot cast out the devils they do what we call occultic pacifism you pacify by an atonement you see that so you is the spirit that will tell you what it will eat so the spirit will say one black goat you say oh, that's it you to all of you had it's not me that wants to eat the goat and then they bring the goat and the only thing the man burns is the legs and the head <laughs> Who will not burn that part and settle down with the real part of the goat and said, Look, he that serves in the altar should, should eat from the altar. And then when I looked at the lady in my mind, I said, What is what is all this thing now? And you know, before I would talk, all of a sudden that spirit just started manifesting. And I said, Honestly, I don't have all this time. Please, I'm tired. Just live in the name of Jesus Christ. And that was the end of it. When the lady got up, her mother was surprised and watch this because that this thing you will go for many days it's not like you go once if you don't complete the uh, the the program the demon gave it can backfire and kill everybody you know how it happens and all of that let me tell you all that is nonsense i repeat nonsense absolute nonsense there is a name that was given to believers there is a name there is a name it says in my name it didn't say the mentioning of it you can shout jesus till forever and like the sons of skiva demons will pound on you like many people talk it's not about pronunciation there is a guy there's one guy that committed a crime recently his name is jesus and one one of these funny guys now not it not the footballer i was reading i said jesus can you imagine that guy so you stand and shout and while you are shouting Jesus Jesus no it is not in the pronunciation it's in the revelation the miracle is in your understanding that's why Jesus looked at them and said go one of the standard proofs of spiritual maturity is discernment you cannot say you are matured in the spirit if this gift is not working in your life brothers and sisters I submit to you and I join the many loving men of God around the world and together we take responsibility for not helping the body of Christ mature we have produced miracles we have produced signs and wonders but the average believer is not mature at all we do not understand the speakings of the spirit we do not know how to interpret spiritual things we are dull of hearing no ears that hear no eyes that see but God is helping us in Jesus name there are many other texts that talk about discernment the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14 let me give it to you please just write very quickly Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14 the Bible says that strong meat is for those who are of full age who by reason of use have learned to exercise their senses to discern between good and evil in Acts chapter 16 from verse 16 to 18 when you read Acts 16 from verse 16 to 18 Paul came into a city and there was a young lady the Bible called her a damsel he said that this lady had the spirit of divination 
and some business people saw her and saw the potentials in her and they negotiated she would give word of knowledge and prophecy and she would bring money and the bible says they made much gain with it and then one time she saw paul preaching and here's what she said that's why you need discernment these are the holy men of god they have come to show us the way of righteousness let me tell you what many of us will do say wow you mean how long have you been in ministry I never knew that. I mean, you are so generous. You don't know me. You're already talking about me. So let's walk together. Can we walk? Come to my pulpit on Sunday, even if it's a Saturday night. Listen, please. Hallow your altar. Don't bring anybody just because you saw gifts. Let there be a system of vetting for the sake of the sheep. Are we together? These are the men. The first day, Paul kept quiet. The second day, the Bible says she kept doing it. One time Paul looked and said, wow, prophesying, word of knowledge. And Paul just switched in the realm of the spirit and saw a demon manipulating and said, look, hurry up, let's, we must make gate to them. Paul casted that demon. You know, they beat Paul because of it. The rest is history. The people were angry because they knew that business was closed for them. As soon as the lady was delivered, she got up. Madam, are you seeing nothing? I'm not seeing anything again. Lord, give us discernment. First Kings chapter 3, verse 16 to 28. First Kings chapter 3, verse 16 to 28. We don't have the time, but let me give you that story. I wanted to use it as the text, the classic text to explain discernment for you. The Bible says that God gave Solomon an understanding heart. And his first test was two harlots who came before him. Praise God. The Bible says that those, all of them had, you know, they had a child each. And then the Bible says, whilst they were sleeping, one slept on her child. I don't know what kind of sleep that was. And suffocated the child to death. Then she got up in the middle of the night, shook her child and found out her child was dead and quietly replaced the child. The next day when they got up, there was, there was an issue. The woman wanted to breastfeed her child. And noticed that the child was dead but she looked well and said no this is not my child off they went to Solomon and when they got there the woman who swapped the child started you know they started advocating and said this and that and that and Solomon looked that was a serious situation now notice this is what I want to teach you notice how Solomon manifested discernment the first thing he did was he said bring the sword that's the word of God go and get me the sword this confusion requires the word of God that is able to cut asunder and divide between bone and marrow. That knife was a similitude of the sword of the spirit. Discernment is impossible if you do not understand the character of God. Not just the word of God. You must know what God can do and what he cannot do. The operation of any spirit must be consistent with the general operation of God. Such that even if you do not find a scripture for it, it still must be consistent verbatim. And so when they brought the sword, he said, bring the child. Bring the issue of contention. This is how we are going to discern. We are going to use the word of God to divide that issue. And immediately he lifted the sword. The sword was not for the child it was for their hearts the woman the woman whose child was like the bible says can a mother forget her suckling child i said no no please if it's issue of death now hand it over and the other woman was saying you see i'm right and solomon said i've gotten my answer madam give this woman her child go and bury your own child discernment let me tell you something in this our world somebody can steal a laptop and sell that laptop and wear a suit and swear and say me do i look like somebody who can steal a laptop you need discernment you can see somebody that looks like a thief truly looks like a thief scattered disorganized but he may be one of the most honest persons in your life is that true policemen need this our our because the number of people in prison today that are not supposed to be there. It's only God that will help. You can look at me now. Never believe that I will steal a laptop. What for? 
But what if I have a spirit that makes me steal it? Are we together now? We have blamed innocent people. They carry money in your house and you come, no discernment. You call everybody. And a smart young chap who is the thief about to go for lectures. And one guy just comes out. He's, he may not be born again, but he doesn't steal. And you look at him and say, come. Are you going to just bring this money out now? Or they will arrest you. And he say, I'm not the one. You need discernment. If you do not have discernment, you are going to destroy your leadership because the world is full of deception. Are we together? Someone can be killing you and look at you and smile while you are dying, while they are piercing you. That's the person who said, don't promote this person. This person is not from this state. And you come and meet him and say, sir, my portion is stretching. He said, my son, ha, oh yeah, sit down. What did you discuss with them? And they were say this fool. But with discernment, as soon as you sit down, something in your spirit, you may not see a vision, but something refuses to agree. Something just says, uh uh. So, have you ever wanted to do something? Maybe you wanted to do business with somebody, or you wanted to do a discussion, or you were just saying, We are going to be partners, and you could not sleep in the night. Not fear, I'm not talking of fear. For, and everything, physically speaking, was correct. Have you ever made up your mind that you are going to ask a lady out? You prayed, you fasted, you were happy. On that day, after you talking and put your tie, your spirit, your, your peace ceased. Ah. He said, I mean, I look forward to this time. Let me tell you why many people land into trouble. We numb those things and continue and continue. You were about to travel, but thing in your spirit, not fear. And you ignored it. Discernment is powerful. Discernment is powerful. But let me tell you something. No matter, most people train their discernment just by prayer. They never study the word. That's why they get into confusion. Are we together? If all you do is pray and pray and pray and pray, your eyes will be open to the realm of the spirit, but your capacity to interpret the impulses will be wrong. That's why you will give false visions. You will give false interpretations. You will see a nice lady. Come, darling. You will see a nice lady like this lady now. And you just sense something demonic in her. And because you do not have the word to understand, you just look and say, Kai, I stood near this lady and I had some, this lady must be a witch. No, sir, she's not a witch. You are not a good Bible student. You are a prayer warrior, but you do not understand the word. And you are using error to now change this lady and call her a witch. Are we together now? Let's be very careful. We have, we have destroyed people's lives. Pastors have used inaccurate discernment alongside other gifts to scatter marriages. Hello? We have called everybody witch. You just turn and you look at a lady like this. You say, why are you looking fine like this? You are a witch. No, you are not a witch. Pray for two of them and see who, who gets delivered. We must be careful. Discernment is needed in our day to day. Do you know, prophets cried in the Bible when things happened and they did not see it or, or perceive it. They said, Lord, why did you hide this from me? May God build us to a point where nothing passes above you without your spirit receiving the seed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Or some of us have those impulses, but we do not know how to interpret it and respond to it. You've been having an impulse like death is around the corner, but you didn't know what to do until somebody died and said, yeah, so this is what I've been feeling. Those impulses are not caused by demons. It is the Holy Spirit. Listen to my message, spiritual perception. The Holy Spirit is attempting to communicate to you. If you do not have the word of God, your dreams will be corrupted. Hello? Because dreams and visions are also an extension of discernment. Am I blessing you? One of the most deceptive tools that Satan is using now, I think in the last four or five years, has been aberrated dreams and visions. God would make your destiny, the devil would try to use the face of your destiny helper to chase you in a dream. You stand up and bind him for two hours, reject him in the physical, 
and remain poor and broke forever. We have to be careful. Satan has made families fight today by using the faces of mothers and fathers and you just say, I saw my mother with a knife. I say, I don't care. She will die. Be careful. Be careful. Listen, our only basis for escaping error is the word of God. Please, you have to believe what I'm saying. The study of scripture is important. It gives us an insight into how God works so we can judge from that lens. There are many dreams when you get up, you are just supposed to say nonsense. Blast in tongues for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, one hour, and that ends it. But some of us document everything. Plus, wicked dreams from the pit of hell, we document it. And then when you are mentoring somebody one day, you say, these are my cup of dreams, read it. And then the guy reads it and says, wow, strange creatures. I said, it's the realm of the spirit, just keep reading. You see, let me tell you, don't laugh. I'm saying this because there are people now who are not even sure of anything again. Is that true? Satan can manipulate dreams. One brother can have a dream and see ten sisters. He saw one. When he was praying about her, he saw another. You, you see confusion? I'm not saying he's a bad brother. But now you've seen ten ladies. You are now confused. So even if somebody comes to prophesy and say, it's, it's um, sister seven that you saw, number seven. You say, what of two? I, I first saw one before seven and confusion. What of people who marry and have dreams and see someone who is not their husband and get up and say, that means I made a mistake. I knew it. I knew that this, look, you are married, you are married. There is grace to live. There is grace to work it out. It is this lack of thing that can make a man who has been with a woman for 20 years. She gave you children. All of a sudden, you made money. And then you go and meet. And, and it's usually us, prophets and apostles. You come and meet us and then we just conjure all kinds of stories. The man goes back home and drives the wife. Say discernment. Say it again, discernment. You need discernment. You need discernment to know who to help. Someone comes to lie down in your room all through that night. Strange occurrences happen. It's, it's not a devil, but he needs help. Are we together? People bring atmospheres. Discernment helps you to pick the impulses of people. Sometimes as I minister to people, that's how I know they're they are in trouble. They may come out for something else, but as I stand, there are all kinds of things happening and I know that something is wrong. Something is wrong. When you train yourself, you can discern the presence of angels. You will not see them, but you can describe them. It's a mystery. You will know, not just that they are angels, but what kind of angels and their operation. You can know their direction. Are you see if now you see let me tell you if your spirit is not trained to understand this you will always think that the people who are saying it are lying and there are people who are lying are we together but you can discern it you can know you can train yourself in a room by the time you are worshiping and the shekinah of god comes not just by your shaking you know i'm not alone this is zion now this room has changed you, that's how you discern anointings as a man of God and you don't use anointing like a general purpose machine gun you won't be effective in ministry like that because you will be ministering an area you sense the anointing but you could not discern what kind of anointing and to what degree so we can be ministering here now and all of a sudden the healing anointing now begins to come if you do not have that discernment you can be saying something else and you see the anointing just like the Holy Spirit is very sensitive. When the anointing comes into a place and it's not acknowledged and channeled by faith for operation, it will be unfruitful, as powerful as it is. Nothing works without faith, even the anointing. Everyone say discernment. Think of how many things that have happened in our lives because we lack discernment. We need to cry for discernment we need to cry for discernment can we pray in one minute say lord discernment grant discernment 
to discern good and evil to discern opportunities to discern helpers to discern enemies to discern doors to discern manipulations of demons over my life hallelujah hallelujah you need discernment I think he was in Koinonia here one time after a very hot miracle service the very next day some guys called a lady they called the lady and said she won uh, I, I, I don't I can't remember the amount but a very huge amount you know let's assume maybe one million or five million and told her you won it make sure you don't tell anybody quietly find your way to the front of I think it was um, maybe first bank or somewhere like that and they met that lady there the rest is history the next thing that lady found herself in Kaduna in a building one of our ladies she's no longer here found herself in Kaduna they took her somewhere in your Kaduna one place that looks like a warehouse it was as if her eyes I don't know how to you you get what I'm saying as if you are you are you are awake but it's as if they did something to your eyes and all of a sudden her it's like her eyes she came back to herself and she called me I said where are you and she said I'm so 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 please I said hey, can you walk out and see a bike there I said take a bike immediately straight I told her take a bike straight to Kao no matter how much just arrive there first I was waiting for that lady until she arrived in and I said what happened to you she said honestly she doesn't know I remember one thief that Pastor Jakes caught in the, I think Pastor Jakes was going to Sabo or something and then the guy was you know some of them use charm abracatabra they sit down and they do something they, they don't put their hand there they can just hang it around and your money follows them from today that devil that comes near you the, the fire and the discernment you will, you will know and you will hold the hand and tell him look not everybody is a normal human being there are people who are men plus possibilities men plus possibilities hallelujah can we touch on one more gift let's touch on diverse kinds of tongues hmm. how many have I done one two three let's do four we can continue next week because there's something I want to talk about that is hot in my spirit. I was preparing it well. I was, let's just talk about tongues. The Bible tells us that there are diverse kinds of tongues. Everybody say diverse kinds of tongues. When the Bible says diverse, that means that there are different kinds of tongues. Probably, I think one of the greatest conflicts between and thank God for great men of God like Reverend Tende who wrote a book I think it was a book particularly tailor made to the northern church to help most every Christian pray in tongues wonderful text you can get it and read it it was an attempt to give a, a very solid 21st century biblical foundation because probably one of the greatest points of conflict between the Pentecostal charismatic and the orthodox is this dividing line of this subject of tongues is that true many of us come from backgrounds and families where people have different kinds of responses some of us even as we are now probably we are still there's an internal war over the issue of tongues the bible talks of diverse kinds of tongues and in first corinthians 13 paul gives us a little he opened it more to us he says though i speak with tongues of men and tongues of angels tongues of men refer to any earthly language the language understood by men used by inhabitants upon the earth the tongues of angels refer to supernatural communications not just languages used by angels angelios messengers any being that hails from the realm of the spirit communicating a language that is not known to men is called the tongues of angel it was an ancient way of communicating spiritual things the bible 
and theologically speaking identifies broadly speaking three kinds of tongues number one is what we call tongues for personal edification and growth you may want to write it down maybe you will help somebody with it tongues for personal edification and growth first corinthians 14 and verse 2 the bible speaks there he says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but to god not unto men but to god so there is tongues that is for personal edification and growth there's tongues that the bible says that is a sign to unbelievers are we together as was the case in acts chapter 2 when you read from verse 4 to 12 the day of pentecost the bible says that the people were filled with the holy ghost and began to speak in tongues and among the many variations of tongues they were communicating earthly languages are we together and most of the people came and heard them let's go to verse 6 just give us verse 6 and let's let's look at what it says and when the sound of God the multitudes came together and they were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language can you imagine almost every language there was represented someone was communicating it now the communicators did not even know what language they were speaking but the listeners they were not just speaking a language in the spirit and interpreting it they were communicating a language they never learned hallelujah a sign to unbelievers history is full of people who have done that it happened to kenneth e hagin it happened to rw shambach of blessed memories people who would go to certain lands to preach and there would be no interpreter and the power of god would fall on them and they would preach in chinese fluently for that period of time afterwards everything goes down so there is tongues as a sign to unbelievers then number three there is tongues as a ministry gift tongues as a ministry gift for the edification of the body tongues as a ministry gift for the edification of the body first corinthians chapter 14 when you read from verse 4 and 5 5 particularly the bible talks to us about that tongues very important it says i wish you all spoke with tongues but even more that you should prophesy it says for he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks in tongues unless that means this is the condition for them to become equal we are coming there that the one who prophesies is greater than the one who manifests these kinds of tongues unless that means the moment there is an interpreter what he's speaking and the interpretation will equal prophecy are we together now yes now let me show you where the confusion is before we talk about diverse kinds of tongues give us verse 29 and 30 this is where many people have erroneously carved out a basis for confusion 12 29 corinthians first corinthians 12 12 29 and 30 are all apostles what's the answer no are all prophets no are all teachers no are all workers of miracles no watch this now do all have gifts of healing no here's where many of our dear wonderful men and women of god who are well-meaning love the lord but have inaccurate understanding of the word of god this is where the confusion has come it says to all speak with tongues now look at what context of tongues the next verse to all interpret so he's talking about tongues as a ministry gift not tongues as for your personal edification are we together now not everybody will manifest the gift of diverse kinds of tongues what is it really the gift of diverse kinds of tongues is a supernatural communication listen prophecy in an unknown, unknown an unknown language be it heavenly or earthly prophecy in an unknown language you are communicating a word from the lord to the people of god but it is in a language that is not known by you the speaker and most most often than not by the listeners when you communicate a word from the lord 
that is supposed to edify the people are we together now but it's just that it came in a language that is not known by you the speaker nor the listeners there must be the spirit of god must move upon you the speaker or another person to break down that spiritual message you brought so that the listeners can hear and apply their faith to it and receive so when i begin to say everybody pray in tongues there are a number of people who have problem with it and say no it's not in the bible it, it was there in the day of pentecost the church in corinth were manifesting it in fact let me tell you this paul himself made a very profound statement and he said i thank my god i pray in tongues more than ye all when you read first corinthians 14 verse 18 and then you read verse 39 first corinthians 14 verse 18 and then verse 39 he says i thank my god i speak with tongues more than you all paul is saying look 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 i pray in tongues more than ye all not just that i i interpret all of this see that it is important please listen to me if you are here seated maybe you are just coming today inside or outside and you have shortchanged yourself because you have probably been sincerely but wrongly indoctrinated that praying in tongues is a gift that is for a few people the person who communicated that is not in error he was only incomplete is that true what kind of tongues if he means the gift of diverse kinds of tongues he's correct it's not for everybody the bible says that and where that gift is manifested it is only beneficial to the body if there is an interpreter the individual who communicated it or another person but the bible says the tongues for edification does not need interpretation because not speaking to men we are speaking to god 14 verse 2 see that are we together now have you gotten that clearly so this is very very important you are here and you are not filled with the holy spirit i can begin to give you a rundown of several things you are missing when the ministry was a lot smaller i used to do that by myself then pastor jakes came join a jimmy too used to join and now the ministry is, is so large we've handed everything to the prayer department and boy are they doing a great job if you are here you are not filled with the holy spirit with evidence of praying in tongues i want you to know that tuesday is a wonderful opportunity for you come whether or not is their their baptism you know a prayer you just come and make sure that they can minister to you hallelujah let me stop here and talk on words we will take from interpretation of tongues and, and the rest because next week, please don't mix next week. It will be a very great impartation. The Lord instructed me to activate these gifts. But I want to talk on words. The Holy Spirit, while I was getting ready to go and take my bath, I was just, you know, praying a little. And then the Holy Spirit began to minister to me. The anointing of the Spirit just came strong upon me. And the Lord told me that I should speak to people about words. Write this down. Words are God's instrument of creation. Words. Next week when I teach you, the, I, we finish the vocal gifts and the power gifts, we'll talk some more. But it's important for you to know. Words are God's instrument of creation. And one classic proof of spiritual growth and maturity is the ability to speak consistent with the word of God listen carefully the ability for your communications and your speakings to always without fail be in line with the word of God now sometimes in an attempt to press into deeper dimensions of God listen carefully and I must admit this to you you know sometimes as we press towards superior dimensions in the spirit which is valuable we tend to trivialize some of these foundational truths and look at them as though they are basic they are for children at every level of your work with god your words will be the programmers of your destiny write it down your words are the programmers of your destiny you don't talk anyhow speak antichrist you must culture your words by the word of god you must ensure that your communication is building your life and your destiny many of us have destroyed our lives because we have allowed our words 
let me show you a few scriptures that will really challenge you can i give you some verses about words that have really really blessed me i tried to write the five or six most powerful scriptures i have found about words and i will give it to you ready media please help us if we can project them they will be great um we need some speed here so that we can pray number one john 6 63 john 6 63 the words that i speak unto you jesus is speaking he says it is the spirit that quickeneth listen the flesh profited nothing the words that i speak unto you they are not just sounds that enter your ears they are spirit and life so while you are saying it is not for people like us we are the nobodies you are sending spirits you are sending instruments of creation you are sending messengers into your future programming woe, programming tragedies for you words are powerful god created the universe through words the only thing god did not create through words is man and he said it is just that he added with his hand again every other thing god said god saw god said god saw number two ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4 and then we'll go to matthew 12 37 let me give us a verse ahead media please give us quickly ecclesiastes 8 verse 4 and then matthew 12 37 it says where the word of a king is these are the scriptures that have blessed me and shaped my understanding of the power of the spoken word where the word of a king is there is what power except you are not a king but if you are a king and the bible says five verse ten of revelations don't go there just write it it says that we have been made unto our god kings and priests a kingdom of priests and we shall how do we reign remember i've taught you dominion mandate one of the ways that we legislate is through the power the our legislature through words for where the word of joshua selman is there is power where the word of anybody in koinonia who has an understanding that means if i see things happening in my life and i don't like what is the first thing to do please talk to me what is the first thing to do listen listen don't let anybody make you feel these things are basic no you didn't create the realm of the spirit you came from there anybody that is born and says i will not eat food the regular way i want to live my own way except you have caught the revelation of being a breatharian just know that you are going to die and die you will die and you will shrink and die like somalian children the authorized way is that you continue to eat where the word of a king is there is power matthew chapter 12 and verse 37 for by thy words thou shalt be justified like a court of law there is a spiritual court right the realm of the spirit works on a legal basis he said for by thy word as easy as salvation is it takes words to impart the life of christ to you the word is near thee even in thy heart and in thy mouth the word of faith that we preach right romans 10 verse 8 to 10 for by thy words thou shalt be justified and by thy words thou shalt be condemned so when you are condemned who condemned you it's not really the, your neighbor no no you only attracted to your life what your words made i refuse to speak negative about myself i refuse it you will never hear me say anything sarcastic about myself i love myself uh, i think it was school of ministry students i was teaching and i was telling them that these people that hang themselves it has been a wonder for me for many years even if i were not born again i won't hang myself no i love myself passionately hang myself no i may quarrel myself i may challenge my body to hang to go and stand on a rope and just tie myself no by your words you are justified by your words you are condemned Isaiah 43 verse 26 then we go to numbers 14 28 and then just two more and we're done I just felt like speaking to us about words by the Spirit of God because many believers are becoming careless 
we speak anyhow and we don't mind and we keep programming things that destroy us and then we say it doesn't matter it does matter brothers and sisters everybody who worried everybody who strives for mastery must do so lawfully we don't invent the rules we find them out it's an ancient part and we walk in it Isaiah 43 and verse 26 he says the B part he said declare thou that thou mayest be justified how do you justify yourself so how does the sick justify himself I'm healed in the name of Jesus yes there might be pains but I decree and declare by his stripes I am healed now when you are saying this you see a lot of emojis look at you and say you are still a baby Christian until one day as matured as you think you are the devil is not a fool he will just allow pride to reach the highest point and sweep you one day in a way that you won't believe i speak over my life i speak over koinonia koinonia is planted bible says, they that be planted in the house of the lord they shall flourish in the courts of our god even in old age he said they shall be fat and flourishing many of us used to do it before but now that we are becoming men of God, we are throwing it away. Get back. It is the childlike principle that has lifted ordinary people to become mighty. If I tell you I don't speak the word, I'll be lying. I speak the word. Shabakatulia. Joshua Selman, you are blessed. You are blessed. I have a little blackboard with scriptures. I recite those scriptures when I'm praying. And God did extraordinary things through the hands of Joshua Selman. So that handkerchiefs and aprons. You don't wait till you see the result. It is the words that command the results. In the name of Jesus I declare wealth and riches are in my house. Durable riches. I decree and declare I shall not die. I'm exempted from the arrows that fly by day. The noisome pestilence. People like Pastor Chris who say, keep, how, how does he say it? I, 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 keep, keep, thank you. Keep saying it. Don't stop talking it. Do it, oh. Do it like that. That's how it works. Believe me, that's how it works. You don't speak once and keep quiet. Listen, if I speak and I say in the name of Jesus, any spirit oppressing anybody and people are outside there, why can I not speak and say in the name of Jesus, everywhere my destiny helper is? By the favor of God, come. That you saw it in the Bible is no guarantee that it will happen in your life. You must speak. Speaking is so important to the point that they had to shut the mouth of Zechariah so that he would not speak nonsense. If he had spoken, he would have altered John the Baptist's destiny. Numbers 14, 28. Very interesting scripture. I found this scripture during a retreat. Numbers 14, 28. Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, not as you desire quietly, as you have spoken in my ears. Question, where was the ears when you were speaking? Did the ears come near your mouth? So while you were blasting and saying, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, I decree and declare, oh grave, where is your sting? Oh death, where is this and that? And you are prophesying and you are speaking and you are saying in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I have a job. The Lord grants me favor. I may not have an uncle, I may not have an auntie, but in the name of Jesus, God raise helpers. The Bible says God is bringing his ears down and is hearing. He says, as I, you have spoken in my ears, so will do not to your neighbor, to you, to you, to you. Isaiah 44 verse 26 Isaiah 44 verse 26 Isaiah 44 verse 26 Talking about the Lord It says he that confirmeth the word of his servant Confirm Meaning you speak and go Let me tell you something And performeth the counsel of his messengers I want to teach you something about faith. Look up. Get any of my teachings on faith. Let me teach you something about faith. You see, Pastor Kong. Satan has lived very long in this realm. Believers, hear me. Let me speak to you. 
Satan has lived very long in this realm and he understands that man out of the assistance of the spirit has one limitation. It's called our humanity. And part of the components of our humanity is that we can be wary. Is that true? Remember the Bible says the keeper of Israel, you know, doesn't sleep, doesn't slumber. But men sleep and they can slumber. Are we together? So this is what he does. Satan knows that your eyes, your optical eyes, your ears, all of these things control your perceptions, hence your convictions. And so what he does is he, he makes sure that perpetually before you is an awareness of your limitation. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Listen to me. So while you are praying, shakato katakata, in the middle of hot prayer, the devil just comes in and says, where is the husband? And you would think it will enter you because you are in the spirit. It will just enter you and you say, oh God, am I not a beautiful lady? What is all this? You see, he has brought you back to his realm. The Bible says to walk in the spirit. Let me tell you what to do when that happens. That's a sign that you, a reaction is happening in the spirit. Every time you make such a proposition, please help that lady. That is a sign that something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Are we together? I remember the time when God showed me the vision of Koinonia. We're about to start. I saw overflows. Remember? I, I said I saw people coming from other cities, other places. That was what I saw. As at that time, they had not even expanded CGC. I remember when I was praying and I was going to go and announce it. While I was praying, 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 there came that voice of doubt again. Don't think it doesn't happen to me. No. Most people will lie to you and say it doesn't happen. It's a lie. It happens to everybody. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That while you are praying and the devil says you now want to disgrace yourself. And God, you have not even gotten a venue. They have not given you anything. Just because God showed you CGC. You now want to make a stupid statement. But the Bible says the spirit of faith has a character. It speaks. It doesn't wish and hide. No, no, no. It speaks. Kabakoto Sakatayada. The spirit of faith it speaks speaks oh let me let me play it safe when it, when the answer comes so that i won't be embarrassed question whoever takes the glory should take the shame every time you speak you put pressure on god's integrity lord i take your word and i shout it let them hear so that if it does not happen they, no 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 i can't give you the glory and take the shame Many of us here, we have been threatened by our physical circumstances into silence. Let the redeemed of the Lord not whistle. Say so. Say so. I say it all the time. I stand before my mirror, Joshua Selman, you are anointed. You are rising from glory to glory superior dimensions of the anointing the favor of god is upon you sometimes i'm listening to koinonia message and while apostle is prophesying i'm there in my house kneeling down and listening because there are two different people i tell you and i listen i listen to apostle's message i listen to his message more than many of you here i can sit down and claim because i'm the one ministry and never be blessed from it there is no koinonia message i've not listened to not for clarity and administration god is my witness i stand before him in your presence lift up your hands and i'm on my knees sometimes i play miracle service messages all while i sleep and i have strange encounters don't think this thing we're just faking it you don't walk this thing it will never work god is not a herbalist are we together? Sometimes I carry maybe Benny Hinn message or something I'm playing and in the sleep it continues. Mysterious encounters. When you wake up, the devil will say, Pastor Alpha, you have been prophesying for two weeks. You to reason. And you say, no, sir. This is what many of us do, God, but it's true now. See, if you, if you don't stop getting embarrassed, by the absence of your result, you will never walk by faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This shame, shame, believers, hear me. I'm speaking to you by the Spirit. This shame consciousness, 
of looking like a fool while awaiting your manifestation every miracle you see will risk taken by faith Lord I thank you nations are coming this ministry is rising oh you are talking too much thank God I'm not talking to you Lord you who I'm talking to you know me I, come on please don't go and shout in somebody's house it's not your house that's why the Bible says, close your door enter your room close your door talk to your father there may not be money now but in the name of Jesus, Father, I'm a tither, I'm a giver. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy. Jakatabata. And while you are speaking, the Holy Ghost just says, dance for one hour. Aha. Aha. The word has come. And you put one hot Igbo high praise. Hot high praise. You may not know how to sing well. She can sing for you. You know those, those, those wonderful Igbo sisters. And you are dancing. Apostle, I can't dance. Dance anyhow. It's an instruction. You dance like David danced. And while you are dancing, all of a sudden, in that foolishness of faith, the God I serve, who takes the weak things, the foolish things, is working a miracle. You see, let me tell you this. Spiritual people must be childlike. Not childish, childlike. We are too matured for results. All this big manism in the presence of God. No, sir. Are we together? Yes. You must speak. You get up and you have a bad dream. You are lying down and one spirit comes to sleep with you and oppress you. And you get up and you say, Kai, this thing has happened again. No, sir. Sheketos katabarakotosia. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that I've been raised with Christ. And the devil says, didn't the spirit know while you're there? Just keep it. Keep at it. Satan is a coward. When he looks at, let me tell you something. When you are bold enough, you will resist him and I promise you he will flee. Is God speaking to us? We have been wasting words. The words that are supposed to be used for edification, we use that energy for gossip, for backbiting, for speaking words of unbelief. Pastor Alpha, that, that, that prayer we prayed that time, Shemi, you prayed it too. Let's be honest. Uh, not that I'm saying there's no faith to it. That's not what I'm saying. But is it really working? Just don't, you don't need to let nobody know. Just whisper it to me. That's unbelief. That thing you did is unbelief. Because you are trying to play games with God. Look, if you are in this thing, enter it and stay there and die in it. If you are not in it, then don't fake it. I'm a talking spirit. Truly I talk. Not talkativeness. Reduce half of the time we use jumping around and talking stories and talking nonsense. Go back to the secret place. Kalabotas Kaliadash. This family is a family of peace. This is my husband. This is my wife. We love ourselves. No demon from anywhere is coming to scatter us. You call your child. Daddy, he thinks you carry him. Say, no, 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 I'm a priest now. This is not daddy. Bring your head. Shatos katabaradaba. Let him just be playing around the head or cry. Leave, leave him there. Don't feel sorry for him. Pray. You get up and walk around your house. Dr. Paul Enenche was saying something. They are, the Lord's garden that they are building now. He says almost every day he goes there to speak and build. Just the zinking of it. The, the roofing of that place is six million dollars. Six million dollars to face 70,000 capacity seater. It's not just ritual. He will go there quietly in the night at his level and status. Jakatabada. Lord, you have given the instruction. Let those who will publish it come. The Lord gave the word. Great, I pray. Over Koinonia, Lord, thank you. Financial help us. Don't just say favor is happening automatically. No. Lord, there are men and women who will bless me every service. I pray that prayer. I'll be honest with you. Lord, I am serving you in truth. And the Bible says, he that ministers to you in carnal things. Lord, I expect favor. I'm a receiver with thanksgiving. I receive grace. You have a troublesome tenant. Someone who is disturbing you and making life easy. Instead of fighting physically, I've taught you spiritual intelligence. 
Lord, this woman is making life com uncomfortable for my children. In the name of Jesus, I make decree. I'm a man of peace. I declare my borders are peaceful. Even God, who quickened the dead and collect, magnetizes, attracts things that be not as though they were. This is not positive confession. This is creation. 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 We are going to speak. Are you ready to speak? Please rise up on your feet. Let's close for tonight. Rise up on your feet. Brothers and sisters, I want you to believe these things that I teach you. These are the keys. These are the keys that produce the results we desire. These are the keys. I want you to lift your voice in one minute. Our time is gone. Just lift your voice and thank the Lord for this word you have received tonight. Bless you, Pastor. Sabala Suziada Katabraska Labariatos. for your power, for your grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to open your mouth in one minute. I know we're teaching on the gifts, but let's start with words. Open your mouth in one minute and begin to make decrees. Don't let the devil tell you anything. Open your mouth. Don't be silent. Make decrees. It says, declare thou that he might be justified. Speak over the anointing in your life. Speak over your ministry. Are you prophesying? Speak over your marriage. Speak over your destiny, help us. Cancel every negative word over your life. Nullify the scorching tongues of men. Pronouncements, conclusions that have come by men. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My God, you anoint my head with oil. You anoint me with favor. You anoint me with grace. My cup runneth over. Gentiles come to my light. They are kings to the brightness of my rising. Koinonia rises as a shining light. Ever brighter, ever brighter to the perfect day. No weapon fashion against me. No weapon fashion against this ministry shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against me shall fall in judgment. Declare, declare. I decree and declare. I am planted in the house of God. I flourish in the courts of my God. I am fat and flourishing. The abundance of the earth is delivered unto me. Everything works for my good. Everything works in my favor. Men arise to help me. Men arise to support what I represent. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord makes me a blessing. I remain a blessing. I remain a blessing. In the name of Jesus. Rising ever brighter. Growing in the anointing. Growing in illumination. Ministry expanding on the left and on the right. In the name of Jesus Christ. The purposes of Christ being established through Koinonia. I decree and declare. All that God has given me is blessed. I and the children that God has given me. We are for signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. I enjoy abundance. I enjoy supplies. Don't be tired. 
Don't let the devil deceive you that what you are saying is not sending a signal in the realm of the spirit. I'm fruitful on every side. In the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit of revelation is upon me. I have understanding. I have understanding. I have the mind of Christ. The love of God is at work in me. It's my year of triumph. I prophesy thanks be to God who causes me to triumph. It's my year of triumph in the name of Jesus Christ. No death. I have no business with death. In the name of Jesus Christ, I walk in dominion. I walk in grace. Hallelujah. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. It's my confession. Walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. I'm walking in power, walking in miracles, I live a life of favor. One more time. Hey, I'm walking in power, walking in miracles, I live a life of favor. Just the voices. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know. One more time. I'm walking in power. Walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. Listen. Carry this attitude back. Don't allow those who speak and say you are talking, you are not serious. No worry. Thank God this race is personal. Do whatever you believe and leave me alone. If my talking is too childish and too, no problem, let me continue being foolish and talk my way into my destiny. Listen, hold on. Don't allow people, hear me. Hear me, Koinonia. Don't allow anybody emotionally blackmail you when you are practicing the word of God. Don't allow anybody to make you feel pleased. What is all this childish thing? This is how kings reign. This is how people legislate. I will never stop speaking. Hallelujah. Keep standing. Our time is gone. Please don't miss next week's. Ah, next week is um, the graduation of our school of ministry students. Hallelujah. So it's going to be the week afterwards. Hallelujah. Before I take the altar call, it's a very important announcement. As you know, our SOM graduation is one of the major ministry activities. We're happy. This is the fifth step of our students. And we are very, very proud to be releasing them. The largest set so far. Praise the Lord. I want to, it's, it's, it's another miracle service on its own. Um, so I want you to come early. Please come. If you can come uh, from 5.30 or 5.45, no problem, so that we can start. There's a lot to do. There are many of them. Please, please make sure that you are here. And let's, let's celebrate and let's trust God. Invite your loved ones, those who are following, listening from all over. You can follow. We'll still, those online, you can still connect with us. Hallelujah. Now, I have to do this. I felt so bad because of the miracle service. I couldn't make an altar call. And I tell you, I've been feeling guilty from Sunday till now. Not, not guilt like condemnation, but it's just been in my heart. I had to ask God for forgiveness. I don't know how many times. So we're going to make an altar call now. If the Lord started convicting you right from Sunday, and then with the balance of what has happened today, there are people here inside outside overflow one two by the road those following online i want to give you an opportunity to make jesus lord of your life our time is gone so you will have to be fast 
And there are others who have one time surrendered their hearts to the Lord, but for some reason, things went out of balance and you're saying, Lord, I return sincerely and truly. If you're coming from outside, I want you to please run. Wherever you are, inside here, outside, just make it here quickly. Let's honor them. We have two minutes for this. We have two minutes for this. God bless you. Clear the way for them. They are coming. God bless you. God bless you. If you came for the miracle service and the Lord told you we are supposed to come out here for the altar call, run quickly. Quickly, 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 quickly. There are people coming from outside. Encourage them and clear the way for them. Please, quickly. Run to Jesus. Our time is up. Our time is up. Overflow. One, two. Apostle, I'm shy. Don't be shy. Hell is real. Run quickly. Quickly. Jesus is Lord of your life. He wants to make meaning out of your life and destiny. And you are here. You are saying, Apostle, I gave my life to Jesus one time. Keep coming. God bless you. Run, run, and come. Apostle, can I come and rededicate my life to Christ? You are more than welcome. Join them quickly. Join them quickly. I'm not sure whether I'm born again or not. You are invited. Join them and be sure. Join them and be sure. Come quickly. Hallelujah. I was told I was born again when I was small. Join them. Join them. You, you are obviously not born again. Please join them quickly. Join them quickly. You don't impart salvation. It's a personal affair. Join them quickly. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, um, ladies and gentlemen, for this bold decision. I know that many of you have come acknowledging the Lordship of Jesus. I want to lead you in a prayer and I want you to believe. Lift your right hand and say this after me. You're not reciting a poem. This is a miracle happening. There are people coming from outside. Please, can you run? The sister coming, run. Gentlemen, please, ushers, clear the way for them so that they would hurry up. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you. I believe in you. That you died for me. You shed your blood for my sin. Tonight, I have heard your word. I make you Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare from tonight that I am a child of God. The spirit of the Lord is within me. I receive the grace to live a victorious life in Jesus name. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, I present to you the ones you died for. Thank you for the grace for these ones to come. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that the Lord will bless you, lift you, and honor you in Jesus' name. Let today mark the beginning of a turnaround. In Jesus' name I pray. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.